What's good? It's J Mac the Fanatic, and I'm back. And I'm happy to say that this is going to be my first collaborative video as I'm going to be working with Bay Area Throwbacks. So shout out to you. Thank you for your help and your efforts in this project. Um, I had the idea to collaborate with another Jersey head and he made it happen. So I'm happy to uh, be able to work with someone else uh, who kind of shares a similar style and a passion for game worn jerseys. This video is going to be on both of our channels, but I encourage you to uh, check out his other videos as well. So if you don't already follow him, go ahead and add him right here. And while you're at it, uh, why don't you give me a sub too? All right. In this video, we're going to uh, break down everything or close to it that you need to know about game worn jerseys. All right. And the four aspects we're going to be speaking on particularly are Stitching, tagging, certification of authenticity. And finally, where you can buy yourself some of these bad boys. So without any further ado, let's get at it. Hey, what's up everyone? It's Jonathan with Bay Area Throwbacks. I'm back with a collaboration video today. So I'm just kind of introducing myself. I have my YouTube page, Bay Area Throwbacks. I know uh, I'm collaborating with J-Mac the Fanatic. So if you're watching this on J-Mac's channel, if you want to head over and check me out, that's cool too. And I pretty much specialize in throwbacks of the area teams, my Bay area teams at least. Besides that, uh, the video we're doing today is focused on game used jerseys. In the jersey community, a lot of you are more into just, you know, authentics or swing match replicas, all that. Uh, I'm in the personally authentics and game used, game issued, all that team issued. Same with J-Mac, he likes his game used. And we like to actually wear ours. We don't just, you know, have them to post them up. I like to wear mine. So anyways, uh, we'll get started with the video. This segment, we're just gonna go over the stitching a little bit on the game used. Uh, this is just obviously baseball focused, but baseball for the most part, from what I've seen in my time, they pretty much do pretty much the same as the retail authentics, the game used and the retails pretty much run hand in hand for the most part beside a few specifications, but lots of times the stitching is pretty much the same. Uh, which is great. I like that you can buy a retail authentic and it be what the players are actually wearing. You can't really say the same about all the sports, to be honest. But baseball, you can for the most part, from what I've seen. So I'm going to go into a few of them. All right, we got a Game Use 2001 jersey. Over here, we got a retail authentic 2001, 2002 jersey. So, um, just getting the stitching. Got close up. You got that triple stitched. This is the retail authentic. Move over to the gamer and it is pretty much really no difference whatsoever it is the exact same I even just measured it real quick see i gotta use one hand because i use my phone because i don't have a camera and well when i measured it before so i put it like this this is a three and a half at the end this is a three and a half so that tells you even the size of the letters is the same so pretty much it's the same now we're going to look at uh, two more jerseys i have that are same time period, you got this Giants 2001 to 2004 Retail Authentic. And then you've got this 2001 Game Use. And if you look at the stitching, got that double stitched. Come here, Game Used. Pretty much the same, a little more worn out, but obviously this was used, so it's gonna naturally have that. And it's the same. Let me go about measuring it. Let me see real quick, let me just measure the A. So the A is, it's down to two. So we got two little notches above the three. Let's check the A here. On the game used. And we get two notches above the three. So, like I said, pretty much with baseball, you're gonna get the same stitching. Like I said, for the Nikes, even when I go to the malls um, and check them out, you will see uh, you get the kiss cut stitching like I've noticed on my team issued current jerseys I have. We got the 25. This is the Retail Authentic nameplate. 
Go over to the game used. The nameplate is exactly the same. Obviously more letters, they, uh, their last name, and this. These numbers are pretty much exactly, or they not pretty much, they are exactly the same. And let me just do a quick measurement. Let's see what we've got here. Seven inches pretty much. Yes, seven inches. Let's look at the three on the gamer. And it matches up. Seven inches. So just further showing that baseball does it right, at least has in the past and hopefully still does, it seems like. We're gonna start off with this Golden State Warriors game one jersey. And um, the player is not really important and all that, as this is not a jersey review, so to speak, but rather we're just gonna go into the details of the stitching. So as you can see, this particular jersey is double stitched. You've got the blue and then the yellow on the outside. And some game worn jerseys are double stitched. Some are triple stitched, even quadruple stitched. I'm not sure I've seen any game worn jerseys that are single stitched except the new Nike. And they will vary, vary by team and by year they were produced, what kind of stitching it has, what jersey style it is. So you really can't say. As far as the NBA logo, you're gonna have that as well embroidered on here. Let's move to the back. And it's very typical that the name is only single stitched. So the numbers usually have more stitching than the name. The names may have double stitching, but it may not. So it, again, it really just depends on the style of the jersey. Um, this, this looks exactly like the front as far as the stitch work. You've got, again, the gold on the outside, blue on the inside, double stitched. So I did mention this jersey is double stitched. However, upon flipping it inside out, we can actually see that it is one layer stitched through the back, which means it's what's called kiss cut stitching. So what it is, is that this blue is stitched on top of a yellow back background. And then that one piece as a whole piece is stitched on and that's why you don't see any blue layer here stitched same goes for the numbers okay and the same will go for the you know this is single stitch name and the same will go for the numbers on the back because gamers are expensive i tried to only buy the gamers that i could not find in the authentic style so this home white is very difficult to find in an authentic if at all I don't think I've even seen an authentic jersey in the white colorway. Uh, in the blue, they made a lot of authentics. And this is one example. This is Mitchell and Ness. Let's take a look at the stitching. And you see it's also double stitched, as is the number. A little difference here on the NBA logo, whereas before it, it looked more, a little smaller, right? and it was not raised it's embroidered and here definitely you have a much thicker sort of like a patch okay and on the back on the back we've we see a single stitched name just like before and a double stitched number and here we go with the stitching on the back so you can see it's not as clean it's not, you see way more um, stitches here than we saw on the inside out of the other one. We actually do see double stitched here. So we see two separate lines rather than kiss cut. As we took a look one more time back at the Champion Gamer, less stitching, more stitching on the authentic, which is better. Well, there is something to be said for actually having a jersey that was worn by a player, so. It's a part of history, you know? And I would say this is one of the better made jerseys. It's an older run made in Korea, which we'll get into the tagging later, uh, of Mitchell and Ness. So they, they, the, the older run Mitchell and Ness jerseys are better quality, I have to be honest, than the newer runs. Let's take a look at one more example real quick. So you've got double stitching. This is an authentic by Champion. 
look at the NBA logo. Again, it's larger and it kind of is more raised. And you see paper on the back. You can also see paper on the back here. You'll never, this is legit, but you'll never see this on a game-worn jersey like that. You, you might see it on some authentics. Here's an example of an authentic that has a double-stitched name and, and numbers. Let's compare this to the game-worn version. Again, I don't buy jerseys of the same that I could get in an authentic. Very hard to get this, the white one, in an authentic of Reggie Miller. I've never seen a white one of this in Reggie Miller. Very, very rare. So take a look at this NBA logo. Definitely different the way it's stitched on, right? This looks like the game worn Golden State jersey of how it's single stitched on there, right? Nicely double stitched here. In fact, it's triple stitched, my fault. It's just that it's two colors, but you've got the navy, gold, and then navy again, triple stitched. We'll take a look at the inside though. So when we flip this gamer inside out, we're gonna see that it is indeed actually kiss cut as well. One last thing I wanna say about authentics versus gamers is although the authentics can often be uh, close to the quality of a gamer, I have to say that uh, while both jerseys, you know, can be very old, and I'm talking, you know, from the 90s. I find that the gamers hold up better. I've yet to acquire a gamer that has, I, I would say, for the most part, the same level of wear as the authentics tend to get as far as loose stitching and these sort of like, I don't know what to call it, dirt balls. <laughs> they kind of like stick on to the stitching, if you know what I mean. And what I'm talking about is, now this one was very bad. It was in kind of rough shape, but I cleaned it up and it still has some remnants of that, what I'm talking about. But uh, I gave it a bath <laughs> and it's still, you know, but it looks much better. From a distance, you don't barely even notice. But, uh, and the last thing would be the wrinkling on the numbers. That does happen on gamers, it can. And I'm not saying the other stuff can't either, but I would say it happens much less and at a slower rate than uh, it would happen to an authentic jersey. And here's more of what I'm talking about. Where on the letters, the stitching, and the numbers, uh, the wrinkling. Now this can be fixed with a little maybe uh, steam, but uh, like I said, Jersey's not ruined. It's just not, I mean, it's in decent condition for being as old as it is. Just to throw it in there, we can't possibly cover everything, but let me show you a more modern Jersey now, uh, gamer stitching. So as new Nike has moved to a lighter weight type uh, feel here, you can see that this is just single stitched. Okay, so it's it don't think that it's not a gamer. This is also single stitch number. So you have a Nike sign stitch now. This is just very typical of how it is. Uh, single stitch name, single stitch number. Let's take a look at the inside. So here we have it. It'll always be a really clean finish on the gamer. That's the biggest difference I could see in comparing it to the authentic. And the authentics will vary in quality. With Gamer, you always know you're getting the best quality. Real quick through some of the taggings you'll see on game used jerseys as opposed to retail authentic. So one thing you'll see is this is a 2001 game used jersey. Um, you see tags like this, you know, you'll have the basic authentic collection tag, but then you have a half inch sleeve in, you got the size right there, 46. Um, with the sizes, um, back in the day, they would sell authentics that would be every two numbers, 42, 44, 46, 48, 50. But for the most part with retail authentics, you're only gonna see by fours, 40, 44, 48, 52, 56, 60. So lots of times when you see um, the, the number in between those, it's an indication it might be a game used or team issue or game issue. So you got that. One thing you also notice, there is no tag here. 
they don't put the tag here. Whereas these are these are two authentics, same same jersey as this one. Russell tag, Russell tag. So I'm gonna throw those out the way. So that's one thing you'll notice um, here. Same thing. You have the Russell older Russell's the '94 Gamey jersey. Same thing. You got the tag there, and then you got two inch of extra length. Major leaguers or in any league. They get a little more say in the sizing, you know, to fit them better. So even though it's a size, this one's a size 42, it's a little longer than a regular 42, which, well, they don't sell 42, you know what I mean? Also, one thing I forgot to point out here, uh, uh, people who know about Dick Dobbins, he had a huge uh, Giants game use collection. Like if you bought jerseys, 90s, early 2000s era, I'm pretty sure it is, uh, you get this stamp on this. I purchased from the San Francisco Giants. So if you see that tag on a Giants jersey, yeah, that's that's a good sign, right there. So we'll move on. This is a, a bad uh, a spring training jersey, so you don't see. There's really no significant tagging that I see on this one, except that it's a size 46. So on the next one, this is a, a 2001 or 2002. Only just wore these jerseys. Game use Friday night alternate row jersey. Same thing, size 50. A size that you won't usually see uh, retail. So you got the size 50, and then you got, uh, these are always rolled up super tight. C plus half inch on the sleeve, and 99 game used. Love that patch. Uh, John Johnston. And then it says taper body. So, so he has three different special tags here. This also comes with the Dick Dobbins um, stamp. That one, and this one's a little different, uh, at least just with the stamp, because it's a black jersey. You wouldn't see the stamp here. Stamped it straight on here. And this is another Friday night, uh, 2001. Only year they wore these. A uh, home jersey. And you will see on these jerseys, lots of times, the black ones, the stamp will be there for the Dick Dobbins stamp. But those are kind of just some of the different taggings you'll see. You will not see these type of taggings on retail authentics. You just get the size you get, and you're gonna get them in sizes by fours, not by two, so you get less size options. All right, moving on to stitching. You can see that you have a tag here that says um, tailored exclusively for Golden State Warriors and has a body length of plus three. You also see the year that the season that it was worn, 93, 94. Sometimes this year is a case where the player wasn't on that team and you're thinking, is that legit? The player didn't play in this season for that team. Well, it could be that they gave them an older jersey and they joined the team in the off season and then they gave them a jersey that was made from the previous season. So a carryover, a hand-me-down. <laughs> and they either had the same number on that jersey already or they stripped it and put a new number on it for that player. Now, you would think they could just give them a new jersey, but no. Uh, that was not an uncommon thing to happen in the 90s. This tag is stitched on every single side, single stitched around the entire tag. Then you have the champion tag with the size. So you have a number size here, 48. Look closely at how this champion tag is. And then over here, you have the plus length. This is what's very typical for a champion jersey. Um, however, sometimes, they sometimes only have this single tag. And then on the same side as the jock tag, you would look for these type of tags to tell you the plus length, but oftentimes they're very faded. Extra length, you can see it says here, extra length. Now the number plus two or three or four, whatever it is, has disappeared. And then here it'll tell you like 100% nylon, I believe, yep. All right. One more quick thing about authentic jerseys from Champion. Um, you may see a double tag on some of these. This is an authentic, not a game issued or game worn. You will see the size here. Uh, again, they'll only come in set, uh, numbers of four. I mean, multiples of whatever, multiples of four. Uh, so 40, 44, 48, 52, etc. And then this double tag over here, some of them don't have this double tag and others do but regardless they are authentics and you'll see you'll know it because it'll have this tag in the back okay you will not see this tag 
you'll see this on Retail Authentics, not on a gamer. With something like this here, this is an, a Nike Authentic. Again, you'll see this in the back, and then you'll see here that there's no plus length here. There's no plus length here, and there's no plus length on the inside over here. So uh, you know that this is an authentic and not a game issued or game worn jersey. And I mentioned before that this was an older run Mitchell and Ness jersey made in Korea. Uh, Mitchell and Ness has its own tagging. Hardwood Classics Authentic says it right there. And then this is missing the size, but traditionally it will have the size down here or off to, no, here it is. I cut this one off to the side because this was a tailored jersey. Um, someone cut it off or I cut it off, but either way, I didn't want it to show that it was like some big size, but this was a, originally a bigger jersey that was tailored down. Here is the next uh, most recent run of Mitchell and Ness jerseys. It's a felt tag up here with the year and player's name. Again, Hardwood Classics, authentic here. And as you can see, uh, a size and uh, a number and a actual size off to the side. Recently, more recently in the last few years, all they did was add on one little, uh, they changed the background here. No, I'm sorry, they didn't. Yeah, just take a look. They, it's just about the same. So a felt, white felt here, but then they added authentic with a navy background to that part. But other than that, it's the same. Now there are other jerseys besides Champion that came later on, like Reebok. And they might have a whole lot of tags. Because this is a Hardwood Classics, it has the Hardwood Classic special tag with the year that they originally wore this style. This is a Clippers jersey, by the way, Buffalo Braves. And this is very common here to see this little plastic tab that says play, dry, dry. And you have the size here off to the side and the team logo, NBA logo, team logo, and then Reebok logo plus four length over here and the year. You always wanna find all this information on a gamer. It's just laid out differently on these, uh, this, these type of jerseys you will find in the um, 2000s. So you're gonna find Champion in the 90s. In the 2000s, you've got some Reebok, Nike, and Adidas, and they may have this kind of tagging. Let's move on to Adidas Rev 30. And the gamer or game issued Adidas Rev 30, the tagging looks identical to an authentic, except a couple things. Um, they will say instead of plus two, so the standard authentic retail will always say plus two. A pro cut may say plus four, plus three, plus zero, plus one. And then the game issued game worn will definitely have this one over here as well, which has like the serial number. And then up top, it'll say made in Thailand and 2XL2, which means plus two length. Okay, size double extra large. Then on the inside, on the same side as the jock tag, you'll find the wash tag, as well as a more important tag, which tells you the month and year that it was produced. And finally, let's go to new Nike which is the current production of jerseys for the NBA. And you'll have the plus length on the side, plus six in this case, size 50. On the Authentics, it, it will not say 50. It will say either 48 or 52, but this is in, an in-between size only made for player specifications. I'm just gonna talk real quick about LOA, COA, Certificate of Authenticities or Letter of Authenticities. So um, I have three that I can find right now um, of some game used jerseys I have. So I'm just gonna kind of go over them real quick. They're all from different companies and all that. So here I just got my, uh, this is a, J a John Johnston. Uh, this is directly from the Giants. So, you know, if you buy a game used jersey from certain teams, lots of times you're gonna get, or I think most times you're gonna get a uh, actual, um, Certificate of authenticity from the actual team. So this is one from the Giants real quick. If you see, this is back when there's the candlestick, 2099. So it says three comp park, which was called for a while. Anyway, so yeah, so this is this one was directly from Peter McGowan, signature uh, president. This is directly from the Giants. This is one from my Calvin Murray 2001 Friday night jersey. Uh, this is from Mile High Card Company, who does also um, 
the letter of authenticities. So this is them. Same thing, just a description of the jersey you wore that, uh, the description of the actual jersey, letting you know the tagging and all that on it. And that's pretty much it. it tells you about the president and signature. That's that one. And the last one I got is the is Grey Flannels, the one I'm wearing right now. Uh, Rock Bet gave me his jersey. When you look for um, LOAs, you want to look for companies that are fully reliable. There have been some issues with this company, I will not lie. Um, I know that this is, that's why I take this one, whether it's authentic, yeah, I don't know, so I don't even throw it in there. I just, just, I just know it's at least it's authentic, I know that much. But um, yeah, so this is another one from Grey like, gray Finals Auctions, but like I said, there's been some discrepancies with them. I'll just put that out there. So that's them. Look into the companies you're buying from or, or if you're buying it from a third party, you know, eBay or whatever, just look into them real quick. See if they have LOA or COA, that's obviously very helpful, different stamps. And look up the company that you're getting it from because a company like Mile High, you know, it's going to be correct. If you get one that's from the actual team, that's the best you can really get. So that's really it for LOAs and COAs. All right, it's on to authenticity. And here is one of the uh, organizations that you're gonna wanna see a letter from. This is the May Gray. I don't even know if I'm pronouncing this right. May Gray Group. And here is what a letter may look like. This is from the Clippers. You got a, one of those uh, Pretty cool sticker on here. There's a serial number authenticated. So that's a really fucking good sign. Dear collector, thank you for purchasing. I'm not gonna read this entire thing, but it tells you uh, this letter confirms that the jersey was worn by Harold during the playoffs of the 1920 season. And it tells you game one of the Western Conference semifinals versus Denver. Tells you how many points he scored and his stats. It's signed here by the president and also by the director of team operations of the Clippers, which is really awesome. It's got all the details of the jersey, guys. Plus, I would say this is the most important thing. If it comes with anything, that you can then go online and, and verify it there. If you want to get into buying and getting these jerseys, there's a couple of different avenues you can go about it, at least the way I like the way I go about it. So first off, you can just go directly to the teams. You could either um, a lot of teams have actual like I guess garage sales or clubhouse sales where they sell them. Also, if you go on the websites, like I'll go on the Giants, the A's, different websites, whether it's the actual team website or the league, like if you go to MLB.com, NBA, any of that, you can buy them there. They have the jerseys, they'll let you know if it's game used or, or team issued, game issued, all that. And you can actually just buy the jerseys from the team. That's really the best way to know that you are getting it from, that's legit. I mean, you're getting it from the team. So you can't really beat that. So that's one way. But the way I use a lot of times is eBay. Um, obviously I do my research on the seller. I do my research on the jersey, look at the tags, do all the stuff. And then I compare it to either pictures or, you know, I even look, when something else I do is I look on the auctions on the online auction. So that's the third way you can get them is online actual auctions. Um, different companies, you can look them up. Um, but what I do is I look up postings of game used jerseys and you can find old postings that may have been sold, but they're still there. And you could zoom in on the picture and compare it to what you see on eBay and say, okay, are all the specs matching? You know, is, the specs, is it matching the stitching? The, uh, the tags, everything, like, is it all matching? So that's what I do a lot of times. I, I go on eBay, make sure I, it's a, first of all, like I said, trusted seller, someone that has a lot of game use stuff and, you know, 100% um, rating. Uh, and then, you know, see what type, and sometimes certain sellers will also have, like the actual people who um, sell the game use stuff, they'll have a specific um, stamp on the jersey. So that's something else, you know, look for the stamp, look for the, you know, make sure everything matches what a game use, specified jersey would match like i said i'm going to pretty much get mine on ebay or from the actual team websites or the league websites but like i said you could also go places like you know like i said mile high um mile high card company a whole bunch you can literally just look up if you look up game news jerseys you'll find a whole bunch of different um sites that have uh, auctions auction sites so i would go there look at them and before you buy from them look up the history of the site See if there's anything fishy in the background, what people review the site, what they say, is this a legitimate 
auction site because there are ones out there that aren't as legitimate. Legitimate. So that's where I go about getting my game used jerseys. A lot of different ways. Like I said, eBay, you will find thousands of game used jerseys. So lots of times you can find what you want. You know, like I said, just do your research. Just do your research and on not only the jersey itself, but the person you're buying the jersey from. So guys, we've made it to the last section for basketball. And as far as buying, oh uh, man. Um, uh, so if we're talking to price point, I'm gonna give you a really big range, uh, 200 to 2000, where is where most gamer jerseys fall. Although I wanna say more like 400 to 1500, you know, with some of them being a little bit cheaper if you get lucky and others being much more expensive. So uh, now that you know that, <laughs> uh, what determines the price point? Well, uh, does it come with the letter of authenticity? Is it photo matched? Uh, is it actually game worn or just game issued? Meaning did the player actually wear it or was it just produced to be worn? Um, because some of them go unworn, what else? Uh, who the seller is. Some people just have a higher, uh, <laughs> because of their reputation, they can do it. People buy it. And finally, um, I would say, what does the name on the back say? Is it a popular player? And is this jersey style popular? As far as where I buy them, I would say eBay and IG. Guys I see selling them on IG. Those are the two uh, biggest places I get. I make sure the seller on eBay has like a 99% or higher. Uh, in rare cases, you know, 97 or something, a rare, you know, high, not high, mid to, to high 90s, they better be up there. And um, I check even when they have a high percent, I go and let's say they have only one bad review. I read that review on IG. Um, I look at their other followers. If I really am skeptical, I might even hit up someone who I know to ask. That's about it, guys. Uh, as far as buying, here are some of the sellers that I've used in the past who I would recommend um, for game used jerseys. That's our video on gamers. Uh, if you're on my channel watching, head over to J Max channel. I'll leave his uh, video in the or his link in the description. Give him a follow. He has some great jerseys, great content, and a great great collection in general, great knowledge. So check him out. And if you're watching this on JMAX channel, check me out if you'd like. I got a lot of Bay Area throwbacks and other stuff with Bay Area sports. So everyone have a good day, and I'll see you next time. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, give us a thumbs up. Give us some comments. We'd love to hear from you. And go ahead and give both of us, Bay Area throwbacks and I, a nice sub. Until next time.